meeting the Amherst Township Trustees called to order. We stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Abraham? Here. Lynch? Here. Yuri? Yes. Kish? I have the minutes from the August 10th, 2021 Amherst Township Trustee Meeting. The meeting was called to order at 7 p.m. by Chairman Lynch. Pledge to the flag. Roll call. Abraham Lynch, Urig, and Kish were all present. Also in attendance are Cerrone, K. Smarsh, G. Lynch, L. Ashley, R. Bechter, and J. Whitman. 8-1-21, a motion by Abraham, seconded by Urig, to approve the minutes of the July 27, 2021 regular meeting as corrected. All ayes. 8-2-21, a motion by Urig, seconded by Abraham. Move to approve the bills and financial reports with reservations. All ayes. Trustee Lynch discussed an updated version of several documents regarding the American Rescue Plan Act Coronavirus Local Fiscal Recovery Funds expenditure planning. Under correspondence, Trustee Urig noted correspondence from First Energy regarding Beaver Wellington 138 KV transmission line project. A public hearing will be held on at September 29, 2021 at 6 p.m. at Wellington High School. Trustee Lynch had two items. Number one, Jade and Dakota Nikoloff sent letters to the trustees asking them to stop by and bid on their 4-H project chickens at the Lorain County Fair. Number two, packets contained no pet correspondence regarding Ohio Renewable Energy Program. There was no interest in this program. Under reports, none for ambulance. Under zoning, five permits for the month. BZA has a meeting on August 25, 2021 for a variance at 7 p.m. Design Review has rescheduled their meeting for September 7, 2021 for 6.30 p.m. Year-to-date new homes is at 3. Under Road, Park, and Cemetery, Road Superintendent Smarsh reported typical work going smooth. Went to the Hampshire Farms pre-construction meeting and discussed the Lorain County Sanitary Sewer Extension on Oberlin Road. Engineering is complete for the sanitary sewer extending southerly from the Hampshire Farms Development 2K Drive. Currently, the county does not have engineering plans completed for the sanitary, sanitary sewer extension for Oberlin Road north of Hampshire Farm. Lastly, contacted the Lorain County engineer about striping of township roads. The county engineer is unable to stripe roads at this time due to a paint shortage, but it is not just our township, it is throughout the county. Trustee Lynch noted that Mayor Castillo called him regarding applying for OPWC Round 36 funds to resurface Middle Ridge from Pyle South Amherst to Elyria Avenue using a cooperative agreement for cost appropriate. <laughs> apportionment. Thank you, apportionment. I just totally like couldn't make that out. Trustee Lynch asked the mayor who our road superintendent should work with and the mayor told him Aaron Appel from Bram Hall Engineering to see if they would fill out or assist with the application for this project. <laughs> Senior Services Administrator Ashley reported she submitted the cemetery grant to the Department of Commerce on July 30th. The announcement for the NOPEC Green Ribbon Award should be announced on August 16th. Phase 2 permit. Trustee Lynch noted packets contained a resolution regarding ARP Act funds being used for a backhoe. A discussion ensued regarding the purchase. 8-3-2021, a motion by Lynch, seconded by Abraham, expenditure of ARP Act funds for purchase of a new Holland B-11 B110C T4F tractor loader backhoe four wheel drive model B110C SLA CP or equivalent. All eyes. All complaints are being handled by the designated individual. And Trustee Yurig mentioned that he spoke with Pete Zwick regarding the drainage issue up by Molnar's. He thought it would involve some ditch cleaning and the ditch would have to be lowered. A decision will need to be made on the scope of this type of project and how this will be funded. To date, the property owner who brought this problem forward has not done any due diligence. The next regularly scheduled meeting will be August 24th, 2021 at 7 p.m. at the Amherst Township Hall. 8-4-21, a motion by Abraham, seconded by Yurik to adjourn at 8-10 p.m. All eyes. Are there any changes or corrections to the August 10th meeting minutes? We have If not, can I have a motion to approve as read? Second. Yurik? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Lynch? Yes. Okay, then in your packets is also the July 2021 credit card account transaction detail.
receipts were turned in for yes, every sir. expenditure. We're all township work. So um, I'll make a motion that the credit card account transaction detail has been reviewed for policy and the card statement is accepted as presented subject to investigation. Second. Lynch? Yes. Yuri? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Okay, then you also have in front of you our payment listing with, um, or I'm sorry, the financial reports and the payment listing. Um, nothing out of the ordinary. There was an issue. Uh, you'll notice some voids there. I had to avoid payroll a couple times and put it back in. Um, there was a, an account change that somehow the bank did not pick it up, but it got all taken care of. There's really nothing out of the ordinary there. Um, our first round of the ARP has been received and um, deposited and moved to Star Ohio. Um, we've also received the second half real estate uh, settlement, which was $322,153.06. We also received the second half settlement homestead from the state of Ohio which was $46,191.45. So our year-to-date revenue is $1,499,174.03. And our year-to-date expenditures are $576,728.63. Definitely makes the budget look better now. I know, doesn't it? It looks like, wow. <laughs> yeah, versus <laughs> biting your nails, you right? That down to them, or if you want to sign up. So that is what I have for the financials. And then, well, we're not doing that yet. So I'll wait. Okay, if there's no questions on the payment listing or the financial reports, can I have a motion then to pay the bills and approve the financial reports with reservation? So moved. Second. Abraham? Yes. Fury? Yes. Lynch. Yes. And Chris, did you want to address the amendment to the 2021 budget? Yeah, your pa well, first of all, your packets, well, we did the amendment so that I could put in the ARP funds, but also while I was doing that, we received, and I don't know what I did with my paperwork to talk. We got a copy here that you've given us, so I want to pass that down. The Budget Commission met, this is in your packet too, David. Um, regarding local government fund money for townships and smaller villages, and it is now permanent. So they had already amended our budget for um, $2,613.80. So the new amended budget that I sent to you, Neil, reflects that. Okay, and to that end, uh, you have in your packet then a prepared, thanks Chris, a prepared resolution uh, accounting for these changes to amend um, the Certificate of Appropriations and also the Certificate of Estimated Resources. Uh, so I'm going to make the motion to amend uh, the 2021 budget due to the receipt of the first tranche of the American Rescue Plan Act. Uh, coronavirus state local revenue funds pursuant to Ohio House Bill 168 of the 134th General Assembly. Now that is the title of the resolution, but if you go to the first section, the Board of Trustees of Amherst Township amends the 2021 Township Budget of Appropriations and Estimated Resources to account for the approximate $301,316.42 American Rescue Plan Act, Coronavirus State and Local Fiscal Recovery Fund, along with any other miscellaneous adjustments requested by the fiscal officer and indicated in the attached amended certificate of appropriations and estimated resources. And so with that, the last minute receipt that Chris had received here at the time was good. So this resolution covers that and that's reflected in the attachment here and she'll get that over to the tax budget commission. So that'll be my motion. I okay. second that motion. Any second. Are there any questions in on that? 
roll call then, Chris. Lynch? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Hearing. Yes. That is 8-8, eight, eight, gentlemen. 8-8? Eight, 8-8-21. Eight. Eight, eight, Okay, anything else on the financials then, Chris? Um, solid. Okay, and the item C there under the financials in regards to the American Rescue Plan um, Act expenditure planning, I did not provide an update today. Uh, we're still waiting on some responses from the prosecutor's office, and I'm sure Kevin will get into the status on the backhoe as we get to the roads when we address that. So with that, I'd like to welcome everyone in attendance. If anyone has anything to bring before the trustees, now would be the time. And uh, Chief Wilhelm and Chris, I don't know if you guys have anything to bring up, but you can do it now if you do need to versus waiting. Well, I just came along to get out of the heat and see if you guys had any questions on anything for me. Okay. And Chris? Um, the food truck inspections at the... Flea market are done. We just got to figure out how to have them send their money to. They were all told that there was a fee of, fee involved. I guess I just got to get with Chris to find out how you guys want to receive that. May I have a copy of what the city sends out? It's five pages long for their application for food trucks, and where to send their where to send their you know fee. Okay. So I think you could do the same thing here. Maybe just take what the city has, condense it give them the address of where to send their payment to and their food, you know, and their, some of their information that's going to be required. Attention, the fiscal officer. Did you want to review that, Chris, then? What's that? The application that the city uses for food truck licensing and vendors. Sure. I mean, it's five pages long. I think you can probably cut that way down to make it a lot easier. I don't yeah. think we need all the info. The city wants, you know, where they're going to park, how long they're going to be there. They ask for a lot more information than what I think is needed here, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and mostly it's going to be applicable when you're aware of it right. anyway, which is right. always difficult in and of itself. Right, to try to keep up with and figure out where they're at. It's, a, it's yeah. usually two days later that you find out where they're yeah. at and what they did, so. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it is, it is difficult to keep up with it, so. Yeah, when they're mobile, okay. I d and for the chief, and, and I don't want to put you on the spot here, I want to go back to the conversation that you and I had, I believe it was Captain Demacchia, is he a captain? Assistant Chief. Assistant Chief is um, when we were talking about using some of the ARPA funds for the expenditure of, of the uh, fire and first responder, which we believe we can. We still don't have uh, written verification yet from the prosecutor on that. Uh, but one of the things that uh, Assistant Chief DeMacchia mentioned how some jurisdictions are using their 911 call center to try and determine if it is a coronavirus case, you know. I'm not aware of our 911 doing that. I don't see that as realistic because, it, you know, seeing that a large number of service calls or automobile accidents, I don't know who they're asking that to get any information anyway. Well, when we get a first responder call, like to go to a residence, they have a list of questions they go through. And number one, uh, one of the leading questions is like shortness of breath. Right. Okay, and then they, they ask them. Do you have coronavirus? Have you been around anybody that has it? This, that, so then when they told us out to go to those calls, they immediately asked us to call in for further information. So then they tell us, you know, it, we usually say on the radio, is it positive or uh, confirmed? Mm -hmm. or is it confirmed or possible? Right. You know, and they usually come back and say, confirm. You know, and then, that, then we take the precautions we need to take. Uh, a lot of times uh, I've told them, you know, if they need you, make sure you guys put all the proper stuff on so, you know, we're, we're not at risk. So. Yeah, so when you're going to different calls or Sometimes they're using different PPE versus, you know, if they're on there, it, okay. We have, all, we, we have everything we can do up to, like, a complete coverage, including the booties, 
the, a full, uh, they, they have the ability to put on a jumpsuit or they have, what is that thing, like a smock that they can put on. It goes all the way down dang near to their ankles. And then we have uh, goggles, we have a full face shields, rubber gloves, our, our rubber gloves are the like two layer ones that we use. So, they're, you know, they're, they're pretty much fully protected and shame on them if they go in a place without this stuff and we know, because I told them I'd jerk them off that truck so fast, you know, they, they better protect themselves because I don't want that stuff coming back into our station. But and what about, and I assume motor vehicle accidents, so you're not going to get that information. No, you're not going. You're not going to know that unless you have conversation with one of them. You know, a person in the accident, they can actually tell you. But you know, we're we're kind of wide open. And usually, you know, in a motor vehicle accident, you're cutting somebody out of a car, or all you're doing is assisting them. We're still using rubber gloves. Uh, I would like to see you guys wear a mask, but you know, there again, it's like, you know, if we got to get somebody out of a vehicle, a lot of times it's, you do it in a hurry, get them on a cot and get them in a, in a squad. So then, you know, unless something's going on really life threatening, that's all we're doing. Okay. And with our having a small and, you know, potentially a paid volunteer force, there was also a discussion how some jurisdictions have a targeted group of personnel that go out on those calls if they know. Yes. I don't think, is that even realistic? No, in not for us. No. I mean, the bigger, the bigger places, they actually have like a squad that they designate strictly for COVID, and that's all it does. You know, and they're, they fall into that category then where they could actually go after a vehicle legally and say, well, we, we've used this for COVID, now we yeah. want to replace it, so. Okay. But, you know, uh, as wow. we all know, that money, it, there's a lot of money out there, and people are, I know the city's done a lot of things with it. But. Yeah, we just want to make sure it's appropriate, and some of it, uh, Chief, I just want to make sure my colleagues here, because they weren't part of that conversation that we had, yes. and some of the difficulties here, that we're facing, but I do expect the prosecutor will approve it. Yeah. Um, you know, so we're we, going to use it more to help for the fire and first responders to help to keep that shored up. Yeah. Because as you're aware, the situation we're in right now, the money, the revenue we receive in is pretty much covering the revenue that goes out. But fortunately, we have a healthy cash reserve there. Right. But this way, we. You know, we won't have to eat into that if we can use these funds for, for this. You know, that'll actually build up that reserve for the future, which right. then delays potential requests for a uh, future levy or a levy increase. So that's the way we're looking at this. We'd still like to use it as much as we can um, for general fund and the road, protect those, because they're those are even as difficult, we don't have this big reserve like we do for fire and first responder and EMS. But right now, that reserve, we're at that point, if we didn't receive the CARES Act fund, now ARPA funds, we'd be eating into that reserve. And as you know, we never know how much because it's pay per call. Right. You know, so it's, but even with the, the threshold, the way the agreement is, there's a minimum. Well, that threshold at the minimum is pretty much the money coming in, money going out. So we know it's pretty much going to be a wash the way we stand right now with the revenues coming in. Well, I did, there's rumor in the mill that the South Amherst people are going to come after the contract when it's up next oh, year. Oh, so. and, that, and that's possible. I just. Uh, well, our mayor's been told that. Okay. So. Yeah, they're and I imagine they're probably struggling because we were their largest um, partner at the time. And you're aware it wasn't that we want to leave that situation. It was just the way the circumstances worked out. Right. So. Okay, I appreciate it. You guys have any questions then for the no, chief? No, I do not. At this time, no. All right, and Chris, I assume you'll get together with Chris. <laughs> All right now. Yeah, do you have that electronically too, Chris? If you could email it to her.
Okay. Thank you. Good. She just takes care of the forms right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I will send it to you. Okay. We'll move on. Correspondence, Chris. I have none. Other than what you already gave us. Other than what I already gave. Yeah. David. I have nothing to bring forward at this time. Okay, Denny? Nothing. Okay, and I don't either. Good. Move on then. Reports. Ambulance, Denny? Nothing under ambulance. Right, sheriff isn't here. Zoning, Remy? Uh, six permits for the month. Uh, the ZBA is going to meet on the 25th at 7 o'clock uh, for a uh, variance. And the uh, Zoning Commission is going to meet September the 7th at 6.30 for a design review. Now, when is the ZBA meeting? Uh, Wednesday, tomorrow? Yes, at 25th. Seven. No, okay. I think it's, yeah, it's tomorrow, 25th. Okay. Are those both the same on the next, on September? There's two or just one? No, uh, September the the 25th is the ZBA, that's right, a design. Right. But the zoning board meeting. That's a, a variance. And then, then uh, September the 7th is the zoning commission, that's the design review. For two, two businesses or one? Just one. Okay. Uh, wow. Any storage places are coming for that? No, they, they, won't, they won't be able to make that. So the month they, after. They'll have to okay. go to the next, next month. Okay. Okay. They have to get their variance first. Fire prevention's already been covered. Okay, roads, parks, and cemetery. Superintendent Marsh. Uh, I don't have nothing to report, just a couple of updates. Um, I spoke with uh, Aaron with Precision Paving. They, next week, we're going to, uh, I believe it's on Tuesday, we're going to have a pre-construction meeting and uh, get everything squared away with the grindings that are supposedly going to uh, reps and which goes yards. Uh, and they are slated for the second week of September to mill off and then pave the uh, south end of Dewey Road from Middle Ridge to Ackerman. So when was that? When did you say they'd start that paving? That it, it, uh, Aaron said that they'll be there the second week of September. Okay. And the third week of September is when uh, sandstone uh, excavating is slated to uh, do the three catch basins uh, for the mini grant. And next week uh, we have planned for in-house to uh, hope to get them completed by Friday, but the uh, three catch bases that we have in mind uh, to do in-house have them completed for next week. And then we have these uh, resolutions, if you want to go over those. Yeah, and we are. This is going to be the time. I just And um, Chris, so you're aware, though, some of this, there's a small portion on these catch basins that are grant funds, but the portion that is in this work, Kevin, you got to, you know, try and indicate on your timesheets and the materials to get to Chris, because those are eligible expenses. You know, if you work with Linda, she can do you into all of those. So yeah. to try and capture that. And I've been working on. Um, I'm hoping I'm over halfway with every uh, all the documents from March 1st this point okay good and the information on the backhoe um, I don't have a, a latest update uh, the sales rep he was on vacation as of last week and then um, I have not contacted him yet as of this week other than he putting in the order for it on the Friday before so. okay and for the 
trustees that may not be aware, the Pose of New Holland, there's also a Department of Administrative Services has a, um, they accepted a bid for a case backhoe. And I know Linda and Kevin have looked at it and they pretty up matched up. Linda said most of the items matched up with the options or just a few she had a questions on she was going to get with you. Um, you know, because they're never match perfect. But the, the costs are still pretty much the same for the same basic unit. So if you end up seeing a case come in versus a new Holland, you'll understand right. why. But the resolution did say or equivalent. Some of that, it, it helps in calling uh, Department of Administrative Services because when you search through their system with keywords, it doesn't always bring up. You would think you put backhoe in and every uh, contract on backhoes would come up, but it doesn't. Sometimes you got to put in road equipment or construction equipment. And you're still waiting for Dan Pettacord from okay. the prosecutor's office, yes. Before that exactly. place. Yeah, he, he said he fully believes that, you know, this complies and is eligible, but we asked for a written opinion on it since it's a large, for us, a very large expenditure. We want something in writing. All right. Is there any other questions for Kevin? No, I have none for Kevin. Okay. Then what we're going to do, Kevin mentioned the uh, resolutions. You've got um, two resolutions here. The first one, uh, this is the authorization to submit an application to participate in Ohio Public Works Commission Round 36 for funding the South Dewey Road TR-105 project and enter into a cooperative agreement with the City of Amherst. I'm going to make this resolution to get this on the floor, if I could have a second. I'll second it. Okay. I just want to explain what this is, is this will be uh, repaving, so it's a one and a half mil and resurface going from uh, Ackerman Road, uh, right at the township, city of Amherst boundary, up to North Ridge. So the majority of that area, approximately three quarters, is in the township, 25% is in the city. Um, and so this one, and Kevin's had conversation with the uh, city of Amherst engineer, Aaron Appel from uh, Bram Hall. And so on this particular one, the township would be the lead agency. So we are providing this application and initiating this application. So you'll have a copy of the uh, engineer's estimate here uh, for that project. Um, you also have, and in here, what, what you have attached to the resolution, uh, Lorain County engineer did this estimate. They did it just for the township portion. Then they did it if we did the whole uh, section uh, so that we could see what the difference is. So if we just did the township portion, it's $99,570. Whereas including the city portion, it's 104700 Now, where it's nice including both of these, you'll see a lot of those lump sum things, particularly uh, when you get into the, the traffic control and, and the contingencies. You know, those are relatively fixed. So it's bet better to do this one time and have mobilization one time. Uh, the application is actually uh, here so that you have a copy of it. The only thing I didn't copy there that Kevin and Linda put together, they actually have a map for the project area also, but since it was in color, it's not going to copy well and it was too dark. But I can assure you they'll have a map to go along with this. You also don't have the uh, statement signed by the fiscal officer that the funds are available to pay this, but that has also been completed so that this can get to our District 9 um, committee by the September, I believe it was September 3rd was the deadline. It's in right. here. Is that it, the 3rd? Yep, September 3rd. So we're under the gun. This is the first one. Um, and so, and David, before you leave, Kevin's got the cooperative agreement that will need your signature. Um, make that easier and then he'll work with the city of Amherst to get the mayor's signature on theirs and their resolution. And this is the South Dewey? This is for the South Dewey project, yep. So if there's uh, no other discussion when you're ready then roll call Chris.
Lynch? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Urich. Yes. And the number on that? It is 8 9. 8 9 21. Yep, sir. What was that yes. number? 8 9. 8 9 21. Kevin's filling that in on the cooperative agreement that will go to the city. Okay, the next resolution, and this is on authorization to submit an application to participate in the Ohio Public Works Commission Round 36 for funding of the Middle Ridge Road resurfacing project and enter into a cooperative agreement with the city of Amherst. Uh, this is for the uh, Middle Ridge starting from File South Amherst and then heading to the east, northeast, up to Elyria Avenue. You know, this is kind of the reverse. The majority of this project is in the city of Amherst and a smaller percentage in the township. The city of Amherst will actually be the lead in this. They'll be filing the application, doing the bidding, you know, whereas on Dewey Road, we'll do this. The other thing here is the mayor's indicated he expects this project, even though the application is in round 36, that the actual construction in 2023. So this works out for us too, because Chris, we won't need our portion of the funding for payment until 2023 for this particular project. Um, I need a copy. Oh, you, you don't, don't have, have one? one? No. I'm sure that there's... There was an extra one. Oh, I had, there it I is. had two questions. That was one of them. Why do I have two copies? Because I say no. Oh, well, that one's answered. But in, in any case, um, we don't have this yet, and I'm not sure. I didn't speak with the mayor uh, since our conversation a couple weeks ago. Um, I know he's had quite a bit on his plate. He just asked that Kevin work with Graham Hall Engineering, the city's engineer on this, and he has confidence that uh, Graham Hall will get everything put together for them. But uh, Council was on recess. I know they'll be obviously coming back. They've got to pass a resolution to get this done also. Uh, we also don't know in the cooperative agreement uh, this is a cooperative agreement that the Ohio Public Works Commission requires. Uh, as I told Kevin, there's a chance that Aaron Appel may already have this together and with the resolution be passed by the city, but we don't want to wait in case that isn't the situation. So you've got the cooperative agreement here for us to sign, which we can then give over to them and get the mayor's signature after council approves this so that it can be sent in with the um, application. Um, we also didn't have for the um, Middle Ridge project, we didn't have the percentages as far as the, um, the splits yet, uh, the uh, percentages in terms of cost. You can scale it out on a map if you want, but it's not going to be as accurate as once the engineer puts the estimate down with the meets and bounds on there. Um, so I just didn't want to use that scale since it would be too rough on here. Uh, I did notice, I'm looking here and I see as I mixed up before, you've got the wrong cooperative agreement on this one. If you go to the other, you know, the two are mixed up between these resolutions. But trust me, there will, it does state a cooperative agreement for the Middle Ridge Road project. So if, um, I want to make, make this resolution to bring this to the floor. I'll second it. Okay, and you, you had some other, other questions, David? That, that was it was why the Dewey Road cooperative agreement was hooked to this. We just had, with the way the yeah. timing is, we just received the engineer's estimate yesterday afternoon. Um, around so we, 3 o'clock, and we, we were We don't have one put together yet. We do for Dewey Road. We didn't have yet for Middle Ridge Road. So if you look at, this is just, a, as I said, David, the two are mixed up. If you go into the one for Middle Ridge, you can just swap these. Oh, if you got South Dewey. There is one for Middle Ridge. You can get a copy from Kevin. Yeah, you've got two of them here for the Dewey Road. You got one from Middle Ridge? Yeah, Kevin's yeah. got one. Yeah. 
That okay. should be the middle ridge should be part of this resolution then. Right. Correct. All right. What's the breakdown on that, Kevin? What's, as far as percentage for Middle Ridge? Yeah, for Middle Ridge City. That's what I just said. We, we don't, don't have it yet. We don't have it yet because we don't have the engineer's estimate yet. But if you scale a map, you know you'll get close. It's going to be in the reverse, though. The majority will be in the city, David. Okay. I just don't want to hold this up with the deadline of September 3rd and knowing that console's out on uh, recess. And the issue is with this particular one is Aaron may already have taken the uh, cooperative agreement, which means signing the one that Kevin has here for Middle Ridge may end up getting torn up anyway, but that means they got to chase the township reps down again to get those signatures. So we're just trying to make it easier for them. If they've already got this one, they only have to add the mayor's signature and the city's resolution number and then Aaron Appel can put it with the application and fill in the percentages, obviously, and date it. Okay. Yeah. Are there any other questions? No. Okay, then roll call, Chris. Lynch? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Gary? Yes. And that's 8, eight 10, 10, 10, 21. 21. Okay, on your agenda it shows a placeholder there for a resolution in September. This is for the ODOT Township Stimulus Program. Right now we're assuming this is for Oakland Road. Um, the county engineer did get a counter out there to get the average daily traffic count. This is on Oakland Road from Middle Ridge up to potentially North Ridge. Uh, this is a new one-time grant only that ODOT is offering and for the townships because it, to me it's just a diversion of what they've done with some of the stimulus funds that most likely would have come directly to townships but now ODOT's using them for this project. Uh, it's up to a maximum of a quarter million dollars but realize there's over 1,300 townships that have ability to get this, it averages out a little over $6,000 a township if everyone applies. So I don't know, they do give some scoring methodology where this will stand, but what, uh, what we expect is the road that's been delayed several years and getting resurfaced is this section of Oberlin Road uh, because Hampshire Farms development has been delayed as they waited for the county to come up with the a new sanitary sewer service agreement with the city of Lorraine. So that is now done, but to get this completed, we have until November 19th to complete the grant application. So we're trying to get the uh, engineer's estimate, and we needed the traffic count first in place. We still need a determination, as Kevin reported at the last meeting, the county hadn't finished the engineering design for the sanitary sewer going north of Hampshire Farms up the route to overpass. And we need that done so we know the timing of when that sewer's going in, since those are most likely going to be open road cuts, and we don't want to resurface the road if they're going to end up cutting this up and tearing up the adjoining uh, right away. So at this point, in my last conversation with Bob Clive and Lorraine County Engineer's Office, they think the timing will allow this, but it's still up in the air. And we'll know better based on when the utilities are completed for Hampshire Farms, and if the county gets that portion of the planned sewer design so it can go out for bid, because we also have to have this project completed and all expenditures done by December 31st of 2024. That may seem like a long way off, but when you consider the um, application, waiting for approval, then the bidding, 
know, awarding the bid after the reviews and then hoping people are available to get the construction done, uh, that will come up real fast. So uh, our first deadline, though, that's staring at us is November 19th is the drop deadline. You have to have your application in. I'm hoping we can do that this next month, but we'll be taking a gamble in doing that, but we don't know if we'll be approved anyway. But if the engineers can get the estimate, we may as well put in the application, hope we get approved, and then hopefully uh, we can keep pushing along in the project schedules and people stay on schedule and we can actually resurface that um, using this, because this is a one time only. We won't be seeing this again. Okay, so that's just there as a placeholder. So with that, that is all the business that we had to cover this evening. I know there's other items that uh, you have specific responsibility for. If there's anything to bring before the board or you need to bring up, now would be the time. I have nothing. Okay, is there any need for an executive session? No, sir. Nothing right now. Any questions from the audience? All right, then our next meeting will be on Tuesday, September 14th, uh, but just be prepared if for any reason we may need a special meeting. That's more probably going to be in working with the city of Amherst. If anything comes up that's unforeseen and the mayor needs something, prior, it'll definitely be prior to September 3rd, so I'll be contacting you guys for an emergency meeting if necessary. But hopefully we've got everything in place that that won't be necessary. So with that then, can I have a motion to adjourn? So move. Second. Abraham? Yes. Gary? Yes. Lynch? Yes.